All right, folks, you've been begging, and finally the time is here. After a great USPS uh, kerfuffle, my tone slabs are finally here. I have two tone slabs to review today. The first is the FS shape 1.4 millimeter right hand bevel, and the second is the vaunted Darth Tone pick, again in the FS shape 1.4 millimeter right hand bevel. Fairly nondescript looking picks, as you can see there. If it didn't focus, that's probably okay. Not much to miss other than the shape, the color, and that the, you can see through the uh, the blue one a little bit. The black one you can't at all. I will be comparing these as usual to the blue chip CT55 pick, very much a standard among mandolinists across the world, and the Chris Thiele uh, Didario Kaysen pick, 1.4 millimeter right hand bevel as well. I'll just go through and I'll start with a scale. and a big arpeggio. Reichman Salt Spring. Thank you. 
Irishman and do a little bit from the A part and from the B part. There you go. First little set of audio for you to ponder on. Um, I will make one little comment here. Um, I don't know if you noticed there's a teeny tiny little blemish inside the pick uh, toward this bottom tip here. That's something that I put there myself as a notation so I could remember which uh, tip I had done a little bit of work to. So the tone slab picks, at least uh, the two that I got, came with a uh, a little like block buffer thing like a piece of foam maybe that tall that wide that long with um, kind of sandpaper glued to the outside and extremely fine grits so 1,000 2,000 and 5,000 grits I noticed on the blue pick here that it was giving a, a sort of almost scratchy raspy sound on the attack on some of the notes or actually on all the notes um, and I was trying to see if that had to do with maybe something still hanging off on the bevel or something so I tried to um, use that um, foam buffer to, um, to to polish up this tip a little bit um, maybe it make sure it was just perfectly smooth um, worked on it probably 10 to 15 strokes at each grit uh, from 1000 up through 5000 and honestly I didn't notice any difference at all so I don't think there's a, a, a problem with the bevel or anything like that it's just the material itself um, making a little bit of different pick noise than I'm expecting um, oh yes, another thing to note, the FS shape is actually, um, I couldn't quite figure out what would be the same size and shape as a, as a blue chip or the Daddario pick. Um, so the FS shape is very much, very close, but when I actually line these up and stand them, say, um, on their noses next to each other, the FS shape is actually about a millimeter, um, taller in this direction. Um, I'm not sure if that's width or height. It's a triangle. Um, so, yeah, if you're going on the Tone Slabs website and you get to pick, here this one's bigger than that one. It's all comparative sizings. I don't, I don't think there's any absolute millimeters measurements. But the FS shape is slightly bigger, uh, maybe than the the triangles you're used to using. I don't find it objectionable. Um, it maybe fits up. Into, or closer to the uh, the knuckle crease here around where the pick rests anyway, maybe slightly more, but it kind of gives a nice sense of stability, um, just a little bit to get used to maybe in the first few minutes of playing with it, um, but nothing bad. Um, let's do a little bit of Bach. Thank you. 
something a little faster. to attempt something really way, way, way up high at the neck.
So yeah, lots of good differences there. Uh, let's do something I think shows off the attack of the pick really well. I'm just going to do a um, repeated note on each string, um, and I'll move up the strings because sometimes wound versus unwound makes different sounds come out. Haney's Kentucky Hustler. Let's try it again. caveat this one this the Dario case and pick um, you can angle it and hold it at different ways that makes such a huge difference in the sound um, so let me just show you a different couple ways so if I hold it kind of flat to the string and hold it a little bit loosely if I angle it way down so lots of variation there so a sound that you might hear out of this may be very flexible to get to something different. And try something darker there. some of the, the things that I notice playing it. I'm not sure if it's what's coming through in the mic, but what I'm hearing. Um, so the blue chip and the Dar Dario fairly well characterized. I think the differences between these two, the, the straight FS pick is a, a very sparkly pick. Everybody, I think, have 
that described it as described it as very bright. Uh, a lot of people think too bright. I think that's up to the exact setup you have. I wouldn't rule it out. Um, and I think the Darth tone pick, um, it does seem darker, kind of implied by the name Darth tone. Seems kind of like the dark side. It's how the coloring is too. Um, I feel like the difference in the sound between these two though is a little bit more like um, if you were to take the, the graphic EQ in your car or whatever else that you might have a graphic EQ on and you've kind of brought up the bass and the treble and brought down the mids. I kind of feel like the EQ on the Darth tone that kind of comes out naturally is a little bit more, um, I think it's kind of like a pop mix a little bit. Um, and some mandolins, especially the ones that are mid-heavy, may tolerate that really well. If you've already got something that's got maybe a lot of bass and a lot of brightness, um, this might accentuate it. Um, it's up to you. I don't think you the difference. Um, and then the FS, it, it's just got something in the, in the attack. The reason that I buffed that one tip out in the first place, um, not quite sure how to portray it across a microphone. Um, but it just almost has this... Um, Kind of like a tingling, scratchy um, attack the entire length from like when I when I first hit the string, maybe a, a millimeter or something up the bevel and coming off the tip. There just seems like there's a, a bit of scratchiness there. And again, using that buffer, 10, 15 strokes on either side of the bevel, I wasn't able to do anything um, to buff that out. Maybe more could be done. Maybe it's the material. I don't know. I'll be able to play with it though. Um, it's, it's not terribly objectionable. It's just something I noticed that it's just something that I have not really heard in any other pick before. Um, let me play a little bit of a longer song. Sometimes something, um, let me go through like the whole first half of the, the first Bach um, cello suites prelude. Sometimes when you go back to back, you hear something, it's like, oh, that's immediately brighter. I don't like that. But after listening to a whole song, you realize, oh, that's actually really pleasant. I like that. So let me just give you a, a longer snippet here. Thank you. 
So there you go. Lots of sound there. Hopefully it lets you help or helps you decide whether the price of the tone slab is worth it for indeed this is the most expensive pick for sure maybe piece of plastic ever um, these picks are 45 dollars each um, again by far the most expensive uh, pick i've ever bought okay not by far i had another one that was 40 dollars uh, of the stuff here the blue chip is 35 dollars the daddario is 25 dollars Again, these are $45 each, um, plus tax, at least for where I was. The shipping is free, though, so that's a good thing. Um, yeah, honestly, I, I'm not completely sold on them. Um, honestly, as I play it more, the FS is kind of growing on me, as bright as some people said. Again, I'll have to listen to it in the recording afterwards and see if it plays out. The, the Darth Tone, a lot of people rave about it. But uh, again, this is just for me and my setup. I find that it just it it's it doesn't quite pull out the amount of sound that I would uh, I would hope for. Um, I feel like I'm constantly like putting more muscle into it, trying to get more sound out of it. The sound that comes out isn't necessarily objectionable, um, but it's just not pulling out the frequencies that I quite expect. So I'm going to keep playing with these, um, and hopefully. Uh, this informs you and, and, and lets you go about buying these maybe for yourself, not in the blind, not uh, completely guessing at what you might want to actually get. So hopefully that's helpful. Thanks for listening and uh, see you next time.